Uh, okay. Take three. Take three. Oh, I'm so tired. It's midnight. Um, I I came home like at ten, and um, I I was watching um YouTube, and I came across this very interesting um uh, video on the on the YouTube channel Motivate Korean by Jeremy. I thought all oh, this is so interesting. Um, and I have some um, s stories uh, to share. I kind of shed a light on this um, so let me share this and maybe you know more people have more ideas and you know I'm, I'm very curious about this myself too uh, I would I, I love to understand it and um, <clears throat> recorded one video I noticed I was repeating myself way too much did a second take and I was way more satisfied with it and then I noticed I didn't press the record button great uh, third time now the record is working so all right uh, so I just talked, uh, respond to Jeremy directly to you. So Jeremy, uh, it, it posted this very interesting video called um, "Why Learning Korean is So Hard: Language is Mind," and brought up many interesting points. And I was, I was uh, very thrilled to to uh, uh, hear about this. Um, very interesting points. You know, there there must be some. I didn't read all the comments. Some people, someone talked about Sapir Worth. I studied anthropology in college, so very familiar. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, I am hoping that you know uh, maybe Jeremy can respond. I, I want to share some some, some develop further uh, some of these thoughts, bring my own uh, theory into this, and uh, and see if you know it can go somewhere. Uh, researching research, uh, other people's experience, and so forth. So one is anyway. So one is how much time do you spend talking about this? Two minutes, great, not too long. All right, one is. 우리 엄마. So Jeremy said, you know, um, uh, Korean speakers say 우리 엄마, English speakers say my mom, and uh, isn't that like a different way of the talking about the 우리 엄마? And uh, yeah, that's how people talk. And I wonder if that, <coughs> if it uh, underlying it, is a uh, is a uh, even more interesting uh, phenomenon going on. Um, maybe. There is a we behind. Is my finger shown? We. Oh, okay. Up to here. Up to there. Okay. Maybe there is a we behind the uri, um, and that we is uh, the family. So maybe when people say, "Ah, 우리 엄마 너무 착해요," or "우리 엄마 너무 좋아요," or something, they are really saying. Our family thinks that our mom is so good, or our family thinks that our mom. What's the next thing? Is no more. Oh, we, that we love our mom or something. So, <clears throat> and that at that only for that moment they're speaking on behalf of the entire family uh, as a representative, as an authorized representative of the family. And um, and the people do this uh, switching between the me and the us uh, all the time as they pick as people talk about uh, che or uri, um, uh, and and this could apply to other things like uri sanseunim. So our classroom, the school, you know, Korea is very socially structured society. So there are many circles: uh, my circle of friends, family, extended family. Uh, some better who better uh, school group whatever anyway <clears throat> um, so that's something I wonder and I have one more thing today supporting this which is uh, I, I, I live in Los Angeles and I work at this uh, uh, NGO and when I often see first generation Korean Americans born in Korea um, uh, at meetings uh, when we debate stuff uh, is I, I notice them um, saying oh like whenever the issue is controversial i notice them always prefacing whatever they're saying we like ah, so 개인적인 생각은요. i always found that super annoying uh, because first like we haven't debating something for like three hours and someone pops us and says oh let me share my 10 second thought but let me spend 30 seconds emphasizing that this is my personal opinion as opposed to I'm like what the hell is it not gonna be what the hell is it gonna be if it's not your personal opinion 
I mean, do you speak on behalf of a company? No. Do you speak on behalf of the United States of America? No. <laughs> What else would you be speaking on behalf of? And maybe, I mean, I mean, no Korean will say when I say, would you mind speaking on behalf of family? Because that's, of course, not, a, uh, not an explicit thought. But maybe it's a blind spot in our thinking process that you're speaking on behalf of the family. And if you're doing that all the time that you're speaking on behalf of the family, of a group of friends, and so forth and so forth, so, uh, whenever you say Uri, then you'll be very natural when you go to someone and there's no social group that you represent when you're talking to say, ah, you're going to check in, you're going to get in there, or blah, blah, blah. My personal opinions are this and this and this. So it's there. Uh, oh, and I think. You know, this is a, is a conjecture, but I think it would be very, relatively easy to design a research, um, either as a, th a thought experiment or as a field test with actual speakers, uh, design a specific research with certain uh, discriminating elements in, built into the research uh, design that would help us tell apart whether this is actually going on, whether when people say Uriyama, blah, 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 they're really talking about this as a, on behalf of the family. I, I think it can be designed. I, I, I'm interested by, to be doing things. So anyone else who is interested in, in finding this out, you know, will be welcome. Um, next point, which is, uh, Jeremy, you were saying um, uh, uh, language, you when you learn the language you are also reshaping your mind because you're not only learning to speak that language but also learning to think like a korean person um which oftentimes like people think oh I think like a korean person you mean like um in, in my mind i'm gonna have these monologues in korean instead of english well it's you know it goes deeper than that and you know jeremy you pointed some of some of these very helpful examples um which I forgot now, but they're very helpful. And um, <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I wanted to go a, a little beyond that and I and want to propose maybe when, when you learn a language, you are really developing a persona in that language, a persona that speaks that language. And when you speak that language from your different personas, it's that persona that speaks that language, Korean, which is... The, which is the one doing the talking and not your persona who speaks the English language, which is doing the talking. Um, so I have this uh, little story from uh, when I was a child that maybe supports this and maybe it doesn't, I don't know, but I thought maybe that kind of related, um, which was I had different voices by language. So uh, there are different elements in which you can measure a voice. Uh, it can be Uh, qualitative, quantitative, um, it can be like a pitch, is it high, low, is it coarse or, or, or softer, or is it, what color is the voice, and many different elements. Um, <clears throat> and I had a completely different voice in Spanish, and in, like almost like a different person. Um, and this always bothered me a lot. And um, I had this experience when I was in eighth grade uh, in school in Chile. Um, our family had moved to Chile when I was uh, seven, when I was in second grade, and then <laughs> I stayed there until I graduated high school. And um, uh, let, let's go over what happened first, uh, because I have tons of interpretation to add to this. So this is what happened. Um, uh, school was over. So I think school is over around two. I think it was around, uh, over around 2 p.m. So you get off, normally you go, you go home, but I had stayed over a fairly long time uh, playing ping pong with uh, school friends. We were playing ping pong. And, um, and then mom showed up there. Why did she show up? I think she came pick me up or something. But anyway, she was expecting me to show up at a certain time but I didn't show up, so she was a little frustrated. She showed up and then yelled at me, something like, I don't know what she yelled, something like, why are you so late or something? And um, I think I told her something back, something like, why are you here or something? I don't remember, it's been a long time. But we had this altercation 
And then this was the first time that my uh, school friends saw me interact with my mom in Korean language. And they all felt, I think, I guess they felt awkward, but anyway, they all laughed really loud. And I was very embarrassed. So that was what happened. Now, um, back then, I thought that I was embarrassed that they saw me talking in Korean. And <clears throat> yeah, I, that's what I thought. But I, every once in a while, I spoke in Korean to people because people were super curious about the Korean language. So, so I don't know if that was going on. Now, <clears throat> here's a new theory about what happened there. Uh, which links back to me having two voices. Um, uh, I remember my Spanish language voice was uh, low in the pitch and also very restricted in how much it varies. Like, uh, like here, goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, what's further above? Like over here, let's see. So um, this is what I was doing. Over here is the women's range. Right? This is high school. So people are starting to change their voice. Uh, we have the... What's the Icha Songjing? Anyway, Icha Songjing. And, um, and right around here is where people... <coughs> every once in a while poked fun going there as a joke. Uh, you know, the, the range between, between the, the high school men and the high school women uh, was what people poked fun as being the range of gay people like being high, high up or something so never <clears throat> uh, in the popular imagination of my classmates uh, being gay was equal uh, equated with having a women's voice and like higher pitch and so forth and people poke fun of it like oh look at you you're you're so gay and then may high pitch like oh a mí me gustan los hombres or, or whatever anyway <clears throat> so i wonder if this uh uh, low pitch of the voice, which is a social accepted pitch. And the fact that it has such a narrow range of variation was a, uh, was a gender performance, uh, gender perfor gendered uh, performance manifesting in the voice. So in order to show that I'm a, I'm a, a heterosexual man, I need to be performing right here. Not here, or not here, where, where the women speak, or not here where the gay people are. So, um, so that's an, one theory to build up this 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 conjecture. The second thing is, I think, uh, whereas the Spanish language was here, this is the range, at least in terms of pitch. The Korean language uh, uh, range was like around here, so it it was higher. Uh, there are some elements that are higher and it had a much higher variation and you could go up and down depending on what you are trying to emphasize um, in the sentence um, so let's say my mom was saying uh, why you're so late and you shouldn't be playing ping pong here with friends you know? so she's like I why are you so late? why are you so late? why are you so late? Or something. <laughs> and then maybe I said something like, 엄마, 그러지 마세요. Now, 엄마, 그러지 마세요. You need to say at that pitch. You can't say, 엄마, 그러지 마세요. You need to say, 엄마, 그러지 마세요. 저 가기 싫어요. And, well, that whole thing is a little bit above the pitch. And then also, um, and then also, it goes up and down widely, I think. I think that demonstrates that a bit. Now, how would I speak in, in Spanish voice? Um, this is how I spoke like 20 years ago, so it's a little bit hard to replicate, but it would be something like... Uh, Oye, Pablo, ¿ya, ¿ya hiciste la tarea? No, no hice la tarea, eh, porque... Pff, no, necesito la, no necesito estudiar. Me voy a sacar un 7 porque... Pff, la, la, la prueba de historia va a estar súper super fácil, porque vamos a tratar con la... Cultura greco-romana y no, eso no es tan difícil. All right, so you see that it's relatively uh, low. Anyway, um, so I wonder if what happened there is by speaking Korean, I touched the areas, I, I, I kind of, I did a foray into the areas 
that was socially coded as belonging to women or gay in the Spanish language. Um, and then they, my friends felt awkward about that, and then they laughed. Um, very exciting, right? Gender and voices and everything. So, um, so I wonder if that's going on. So where I'm trying to go with this, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much that contributes to a theory that you need to, but I remember in high school, uh, uh, by high school I had like fully developed uh, linguistically and I remember I had a very distinct uh, Spanish language voice, not, in, not just in pitch, but like everything. It sounded like a different person. So I had a different uh, voice in Spanish and a different voice in Korean. And I always wonder, is one of these two voices a fake voice? And why am I faking my voice in order to speak the language? Like, can't I just have one voice and you know speak both language with one? But maybe if this theory is correct, uh, which theory? The, the theory that when you learn a language, you're not only learning the language, but also developing your own personality. Um, then it will make sense that you learn a language, you have a separate personality, or you have another personality, a persona, that speaks the language with its own voice. Uh, both figuratively, as in personality, a voice, and also literally like in a physical <coughs> voice. So thanks, Jeremy, for the great uh, uh, thoughts. Very interesting. And I hope more people can engage on this, share their experiences or their thoughts, and maybe even like academics jumping in and uh, you know giving us some theoretical background to understand what's going on. So thanks. Bye.